What's going on guys? I'm back with another video and today it is to talk about how powerful was Skullface's gun really? So if you don't know the gun I'm talking about, it's a gun that you have the option to shoot Skullface with at the end of mission 31 and you can shoot Skullface with it up to three times. After that Miller forces Snake to shoot Skullface and blow off his limbs and then they sort of just leave him to bleed out, but Huey ends up coming over and finishes him off. Some people stated that the gun was meant to be available to develop after Mission 31, but I couldn't find an official source that states this. However, there is evidence in the game's files to support it. So before we get into the technical modding aspect of this video, let's first see what information the game officially gives us about the weapon. So we can tell from its appearance that it is a lever action weapon and it appears to be a shotgun. We can also get an idea of its clip size from the cutscene at the end of Mission 31. So as you can see, in the cutscene, at maximum the gun can appear to be shot 10 times. However, it's uncertain whether some of the shots are repeated throughout the cutscene, but there are at least 7 distinct shots, so we can assume the clip size of Skullface's gun to be somewhere between 7 and 10. Unfortunately, this is all of the official information we're given. We're going to have to dig into Metal Gear's files to see if we can find more. Alright, so now we're headed into Metal Gear's files. If we go to 00.dat, Assets, TPP, Level Asset, Weapons, Parameter Tables, and Parts, then we can find a Lua script there, which contains information on all of the game's weapons. So I used a little plugin in Notepad++ to format the Lua as JSON and make it more readable. From there, I just searched for Skull to see if I could find anything related to Skullface. I found a match, so what I found was information related to Skullface's gun. So there are a couple interesting things we can learn from this. First, you'll notice that the name contains HG in it. This stands for handgun. This means that Skullface's gun wasn't a shotgun at all, but it was actually a handgun. The other thing that we can take note of is the AM entry on the fourth line for the entry for Skullface's weapon. AM stands for ammunition, so if we search for that, we should be able to find information about Skullface's gun's ammunition. Searching for that led me here, and as you can see, we have a couple numbers, 6 and 90. These numbers are the clip size for the gun and the total ammo of the gun respectively, 6 being the clip size and 90 being the total ammo. So you might be thinking, well this means that the cutscene was wrong, our lowest possible value for the magazine was 7 there. But most guns in this game can be tactically reloaded, adding an extra shot to the uh, magazine. So this means that our estimate of 7 could be correct. This doesn't answer the question of how powerful the gun actually is though, this only gives us information about its ammo. The gun appears to have all of its values set, and there is obviously a working model in the game for it, so 
it seems likely that all of the assets available to make it work are there. So maybe with some messing around with the files, we can actually get it in game. Through breaking the game's item list, we can actually make it possible to develop items we're not supposed to. I did this by causing it to return without loading any values, so everything is accessible for development. This actually allows us to develop Skullface's gun, which is under the shotgun category, and is named the Skull Custom. However, in the text above its description, it is incorrectly named Training Rifle, which is actually another inaccessible weapon. Its description also states that it's a unique lever-action rifle. But isn't it supposed to be a shotgun? And the files also said it was a handgun. Obviously, this gun's development was not finished correctly. We can, however, take note of its insane damage value. That number is higher than every offline sniper rifle, and also every offline rocket launcher. Since it shows up as an item available to equip, we might as well equip it and deploy with it, and see what it can do. Unfortunately, we can't. The game just freezes like this, you're able to move the camera around, but you're not able to do anything else. We're going to need another method to try and get the gun in the game. So since we can't get our gun in before we deploy, we're going to have to get it in after. And how can we do this? Well, the same way we get all of our other weapons after deploying, through supply drops. So I've written a script that takes advantage of the supply drop code, supply drop but instead complete. supply drops in the school custom. If the script is successful, and we can also now see that the Skull Custom is indeed a handgun, and not a shotgun, or a rifle, as the other in-game descriptions say. We can also finally test out how powerful it is. It's a one-shot kill on all of these standard enemies. However, trying to reload the gun just doesn't work. The animation is broken, and nothing actually happens when you try to reload it. If you shoot out all of your remaining ammo and try to reload it that way, that doesn't work either. After you've emptied the magazine, the gun cannot be reloaded in any way. So we know the gun can one-shot kill normal enemies, but I wanted to give it a more thorough test. So I decided to do a training run against my own FOB with enemies that have grade 10 battle dresses. I used another script to load in a modified version of the weapon which could hold all of its ammo inside the clip. So this way I would actually have more than six shots to test with and I'll let the video speak for itself.
even from insane distances like this, the gun is powerful enough to put enemies in the grade 10 battle dress down into the bleeding out state in a single shot. We now know that the gun's insanely overpowered, but we just don't know exactly how overpowered yet. We're going to need an enemy with a health bar to test that. What better mission to test it out on than the only one where it's actually used? This is the extreme version of Sahelanthropus, and this should give you an idea of exactly how powerful this gun really is. An interesting thing to note about the gun on this uh, mission is that it actually has sound. Everywhere else in the game it won't, but right here it will. And that's how you complete the extreme version of Sahelanthropus in about three minutes. You use an extremely broken gun that's not meant to be in the game. Support helicopter requested. The gun was removed for pretty obvious reasons. It was way too overpowered, especially for a pistol. And they couldn't decide whether it was a shotgun, a rifle, or a pistol. Anyway, that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you guys in another video.